Ocean's Eleven meets <laughs> Homeland. What, what the hell was that, Jason? It, it was way less sophisticated than that. Um, I was hired by a bank in Beirut, Lebanon, to show them how physical compromise of their branches could translate to actual electronic money being leaving their company. And so they said, we're going to pick three random branches. You try your best to get in. We want you to get a user ID, a password, a smart card, because they do two-factor authentication, the computer that smart card goes into, and network access. So I need to get five things. So the first branch I go into, never been in there before, but you just saw the surveillance video from that, that branch from walking into the door for the first time, never seeing it, to getting access behind the teller line was two minutes and 22 seconds. That's how long it took to get full access. I was there for over 30 minutes. I got a user ID, I got a password, and I got a smart card. Uh, I had to lie really bad to the manager, made me feel bad. So the next branch, I didn't I'm, talk to I'm anybody. I'm sure you stayed up late at night worried about that, right? <laughs> I do. I don't like. I don't like hurting people's feelings. It's like, uh, but I, I have to steal from them, so you know, it goes with the territory. <laughs> Mind you, folks, being on stage with Jason is kind of like being in the ring with John Cena. Okay, <laughs> he is the most dangerous man in the room, if not Washington, right now. I met him earlier this morning, and within the first 30 seconds. He looked at me and said, hey, Pete, by the way, I have access to everything on your phone right now. It was an accident. I didn't know you were still on there, but it's like, <laughs> sorry about that. Digital version of my fly being down. Yeah, it's like, uh, so, so I just went in and, and I stole a computer, and then I went to the next branch. I mean, I literally walked in without talking to anybody, and I stole the computer from the teller line while there was another teller working next to me. And then I went to the uh, next branch and I stole uh, access into their network thing. So I got all five things, three branches. So um, that's how it worked. <laughs> and the company, so t tell me about your typical clients. They come to you and they, they find you how? Uh, usually uh, via the internet, through talks. I do a lot of talks at hacker conferences around the world. It's, uh, I do uh, different engagements. I'm in uh, the press every once in a while. Uh, and I usually, I pick my clients that are like really weird and interesting, so I go to places like, uh, I've broken into hotels in Malaysia, the south of France, Germany, the U.S. I've broken into a state treasury, security research facilities in the U.S., banks in Jordan, Jamaica, Lebanon, and uh, Cyprus uh, in the U.S. So just a little, bit, a, little bit, a little weird, just little things. Well, walk us through some of the, some of the slides that you have about that particular hack. Okay, we had an uh, issue with some of the slides. So it's like what we did was we had to change things up a little bit. That's the reason why the hacker kitty's on there. Um, so I wanted to show why, how quickly and how easy it is to actually gain access to your internal network from your employees. Uh, so uh, this is an engagement that I was, I was done. This is an actual engagement that I was given uh, to, uh, I was hired by a telecom company in Lebanon to uh, break into their network. The CEO hired me to do a spear phishing campaign, meaning targeting. Yeah, what is spe spear phishing? A spear phishing is to target the actual employees uh, okay. specifically, not just like, you know, hey, click link, promise it's cool. This is to actually show them the, um, the uh, dangers of it. So what we did was um, I decided, he said I could pick one person or 100. I chose one person the guy who hired me, the CEO. How did uh, he like that? Oh, uh, I don't think I'm going to be going back, but it was the principle, because he wanted me to... <laughs> the key thing is these are teachable moments. I don't try to break in and destroy things. I'm trying to help educate your employees. He wanted the names of the employees that, that got caught to sort of like punish them for getting caught, and I don't work that way. So I was like, well, if you're going to make me give you Little names... Little then, right? Uh, yeah, well, no, it's just if you're going to make me give you names, I'll give you a name. It's, it's going to be you. And, uh, and so uh, it took about 30 minutes to do this whole thing that I'm going to show you through. It literally took less than 30 minutes to create this whole attack and, and launch it. And the, the first one is I went to their website. That's the research I did. I went to their website, and this is their actual website there. I uh, then went to their about page. I get more information on CEOs and executives that I'm going to target for an attack by their page. They give me all the information I usually need. Uh, I do not use a lot of high-level uh, uh, attacks. I don't do anything like we see with all the command prompts. It's less than two hours on Google. I've never used more than two hours on Google to find enough information to successfully compromise a company. Never. Um, so I went to his about page, saw that snazzy picture. I downloaded it uh, so I could do a reverse image search on Google for all the different um, pictures where he's used it, because usually he uses the same profile. It's like, hey, that's a really snazzy picture of me. I want to use it everywhere. So uh, doing that, I was able to find his Twitter page, 
which was really cool because by using his Twitter page, I found out that he was actually at this conference. And I love people that go to conferences because you got to do a networking. You gotta, so, but can you name every person that you talked to from three months ago at a conference you met? No. So that was perfect. So what I did was I went to the conference page and I saw who the speakers were. And I found one of the speakers that was in the same field that he was in and I stole his identity because I could. Uh, that's his identity right there. That's the actual real person. So what I do is I send him an email saying, dear, what's your name, CEO? It was great meeting you again. As we discussed at GSMA Mobile 360 in Dubai this past October, here's a link to the MENA Telecom Alliance, and there's the website. I hope you agree to be uh, one of our board members and help with moving Lebanon forward to the future in technology. Best regards, Asif Aziz, that's his actual title, sent from a mobile device. Now, you say sent from a mobile device because you're forgiving when you see that. It's like, so I don't know if he's ever talked to him before. I don't know if he says dear or, or hello or hiya. I don't know how he sent, uh, signs it like best regards or thank you. Or, so you make it mobile device and you make it forgiving. It took, uh, you go to the site. This is a horrible site. I don't suggest you actually go there because you will be compromised. Uh, before the picture loads and you realize <laughs> that the picture's ugly, you're already compromised. It's just getting to the site is the compromise. So as soon as you go there. So you send them to yours, okay. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So as soon as I send them to it, it's like uh, his system was compromised, and there it is. Less than 12 hours, I had full access to the so device. What, so what happens? He clicks on that link, goes to your site, and what happens? Uh, we're there, I can install malware. I can uh, harvest his credentials. I can install a, uh, a Trojan that when he goes back to his corporate network, gives me access to the internal corporate network. It's like, and then I can spread out and look for other devices to compromise. It's a launching point into the internal network. I don't have to bust down your, your, your firewalls or your front doors. It's like you're bringing me in behind the gates. Now, Jason, you, your title is Hacker and Information Sector Ranger. Yes. Now, hack, hacker has a negative connotation to a lot of people. Unfortunately. But it doesn't to you. So tell me why. I proudly call myself a hacker because uh, Leonardo da Vinci was a hacker. Nikolai Tesla, his birthday was yesterday, was a hacker. It's like Alan Turing was a hacker. Uh, Grace Hopper, uh, Ada Lovelace. Those are all hackers. It's uh, creating and thinking outside the box. Criminals are using the tools that hacker makes uh, to commit crimes. Just like a person who robs you at gunpoint isn't a Second Amendment rights activist or an NRA supporter, they're a criminal that's using the gun. It's like, so criminals find out that tools to commit commuter crimes are very easy to use. That's what they use to commit crime. They're not hackers. They're criminals who are using those tools. So I don't do the whole black hat, white hat thing. It's like, I'm a hacker. It's like when a banker or a um, bondsman or anybody that commits a crime they don't become a black hat banker, and now you've got white hat bankers. No, you got bankers and you got criminals, and that's how it's, that's how it should be differentiated, not between you know black hat or white hat. It's like so you're a hacker or you're a criminal. Do people ever reach out to you to hire you for criminal activity? Uh, I've actually had some people that that have tried to do things. Uh, I'm responsible for 13 Romanians going to jail because they made the mistake of trying to fish and do an attack on uh, one of the companies that I work for. So uh, I like when bad people go to jail. So it's like, it's, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the about the attack with the with the telecom bank. Um, so basically, what it was was just trying to do that, just trying to find out the information. It's people don't understand how much information that they give out on social media on their Facebook page, and I use the companies. Uh, Facebook page as well to do that. It's like I will go to their page, see who shares and likes their photos. Usually they're employees of the companies. And when I use that, uh, that helps me gather more information. And then I target those employees and they bring the attack inside their company as well. Uh, I also do things, I'm trying to think, let's see what's on the next one. Okay, there is no other slide. So what, what else I've done is I will set up devices like outside of your company, uh, like Starbucks or your, where your restaurants. There's always places around your headquarters where your people will congregate that usually offers free Wi-Fi. Well, unfortunately, for a lot of people, there's these devices like this one right here. Where's the cable right here? This is the new Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano. Uh, and this device is very, it's less than $100, and it will take every access point in the area, and it mimics it. So even when your phone is not being used and your laptop's not being used, it's constantly broadcasting, asking for Wi-Fi access. So when you ask for Starbucks or you ask for Oingo Boingo or GoGo InFlight or any of these other things, guess what happens? 
my device says, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Connect to me. And when you connect to me, you're going to have a bad day. So every, everyone here can go on Amazon today and order up this thing, is that correct? Uh, they can go to hack5.org. Oh, not, okay, the, yeah. the Amazon for hackers, yeah. right? And you can ask uh, Jessis uh, dash air, uh, Caroline, uh, S-I, uh, Caroline Y-S iPhone, uh, D-H-O-R-O-W-I-T. His device is on there as well. These are some new friends that you met in the audience Yes, today? these are all people here currently right now. They're connected to this device. It's currently on. All right, and what can you do to them uh, now that they're... All their traffic can be monitored, so whenever they're getting their emails, whenever they're going to websites. But more importantly, what I do is, when you're on my network, you're going to need updates. Okay. You're going to need updates for your, uh, maybe your, your uh, Twitter or your Facebook app. or these, And those are all malicious now. It's like, uh, the, the, you can actually alter the, the phone system uh, by doing an update, by doing a malicious update. And you're going to accept updates because you think it's coming from the actual legitimate source. Or I can make you go to every page that you go to. It goes to my page that's trying to download or install malware onto your device, including your laptops. So you think within a couple minutes or a couple hours you can be into their, their banking information? Oh, my gosh. It's never been hours. It's like minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry like, to insult you, yeah, my friend. Yeah, it's, 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 it's basically minutes. It's like I've never gone through a full episode of Voltron, it's like, which is like 20-something minutes without hacking somebody. So <laughs> that's my, my indicator. So. All right, so we spent most of the morning talking about having speaker after speaker talk about how human capital is the most important asset for companies. You're only as good as the talent you have out there. You are saying that employees are your weakest link? No, I'm saying that your employees can be your weakest link. They can be your liability or your asset. It's all on how you approach them. Your employees, I mean, I tell people in the security industry, in the hacking industry, everybody likes to say stupid user clicked on a link or stupid user went to a website. I say stupid security didn't properly teach their employees. Mm. Because if you want to know how smart your employees are, you take solitaire off their computer. See how quickly they figure out how to put that back. It's like they're, they're innovative. They're, they're educated. Teach them from the day one. When you're teaching them how to make the widgets or how to produce the widgets or how to market the widgets, teach them how to secure the widgets. Because when you actually tell them from day one that part of their job responsibility is to stay secure online and give them the means to do that, they're going to do it because that's part of their job. But a lot of employees today don't realize that's part of their job. So on a scale of zero to 10, zero being the front door and the back door is wide open, 10 being is Fort Knox, where are most Fortune 500 companies? Uh, most Fortune 100 companies, I would say... Uh, what's the one where the doors open, the back doors open, and the windows zero, are open? Zero is complete access 0. to everything. 0.1, it's like the, the windows are open as well. Uh, so uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's really, a, I mean, you looked at one of the recent events where there was a retail company that there was total compromise by a third-party vendor who got a phishing email. It wasn't a sophisticated attack, but it was devastating to their corporate environment. So... A lot of companies are thinking that I'm going to build more firewalls. I'm going to get more intrusion detection systems. I'm going to make sure that my antivirus is updated, and that's going to protect me. And that is, that is not even the battlefield anymore. It's like it's gone beyond that. They're still trying to make sure that their biplanes have plenty of bullets, and we're doing tactical or, uh, nukes from orbit. So if a Fortune 500 companies are 0 0.1, where are most small businesses? Small businesses can be anywhere from like one to one point two uh, because they're actually because they're you think smaller. They're better. You think they're better? Slightly or more better secure? because they're more okay. agile and because they're smaller. So therefore, mm -hmm. they're more uh, uh, understanding of where their things are. But they're also not being targeted as much. As soon as they get the target, it's a game over. There was a bike shop in Poughkeepsie, New York. The guy was like, "Well, I'm just a bike shop in Poughkeepsie. I don't have to worry about security." So he creates a web server. Onto his, on, into his premise, onto his bike shop that's got his, to, his bikes for sale. And he thought, no big deal, because I'm just a small little bike shop in Poughkeepsie. Until four months later, he was raided by the FBI because his website was compromised because it wasn't secured and it was being used to host uh, really horrible videos, uh, pirated software and malware by several different countries and hackers from several different countries. It's like, that's how easy it is. It's not because they went after him because they wanted to steal his bikes. He had resources that they could use. If you had to, we have a lot of employers in the audience, if you had to give three pieces of advice to employers 
about how to protect their companies better, what would they be? I think number one is to understand that you have access to the best intrusion detection system you're ever going to have. It's your employees. But do you educate them on what they need to be protected by? Do you educate them on what they should be looking for? Do you empower them to actually call somebody when they see something suspicious? Do you empower them to send an email? Do you, one of the things that costs hardly anything to do, but do you actually give them a phone number, an extension to call when they receive a suspicious email, when they see someone suspicious in their facility? I broke into one bank and I had the bank manager telling me, he's like, you're not supposed to be here. Well, I was plugging in this malware device on a USB drive and I was going, you're right, I shouldn't be here. I, you should call someone. Hold on, let me plug that in. Yeah, you should definitely call someone. I shouldn't be here. Oh, hold on a second, plugged in to another one. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know I'm supposed to be here. I don't know why you don't. But if you don't think I'm supposed to be here, hold, hold, you should definitely call somebody about that. Five <laughs> machines while she was telling me that I shouldn't be there. She knew that I was wrong, but she didn't have a way to actually communicate that. So this is a very analog answer to, to some of these problems. Exactly. No, uh, uh, I tell people, it's like blinky boxes are not going to solve your problems. Education and a thorough process of security is going to solve your problems. Okay, how about a couple bits of advice for individuals, right? I mean, you met me and within 30 seconds uh, you were able to access my phone. Now it's because I had my Wi-Fi still on right. and I usually remember to turn it off. What, else, what, can, what can we do to protect ourselves? Whenever you're on uh, Starbucks or a hotel uh, or anywhere that's not your actual home network that's properly secured in the first place, uh, use a VPN service. Uh, there's plenty of uh, VPN services. Uh, I use one personally, I'm not getting any money from them, though I should, is Ytopia. Ytopia.net uh, is a VPN service that you pay uh, yearly, and it goes on your devices, it goes on your computers, and it creates a secured connection no matter what device or environment you're on, no matter what hotel. And also, the other thing is, be suspicious. When you're getting emails, and they have an attachment or they have a link, you're usually understanding about the conversation why that's being sent to you. Mm -hmm. Trust that. So if you get something out of the blue that seems suspicious, that doesn't seem like you should be opening it, don't open it. It's like, check on it. There's a website called virustotal.com. And with virustotal.com, you can upload malicious links or possible malicious links or programs that were sent to you in packages. And they will scan it with like the top 50 antivirus programs, and they will tell you, based on ratings, if it's suspicious or not. Uh, last question here. You started at what time with this? Uh, that's my second bottle. It's like uh, about round eight. <laughs> and you'll be finished with this by when? Uh, well, now that I can start drinking more, probably around noon. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.